As we've been reporting, an article of impeachment against former President Donald Trump was delivered to the Senate Monday evening. Mr. Trump is charged with incitement of insurrection following the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. The former president told his supporters to, quote, fight like hell in a speech not long before they stormed the Capitol building. His impeachment trial is scheduled to begin the week of February 8th. Jessica Levinson joins me now. She is a professor at Loyola Law School. Hi again. Nice to see you, Jessica. So normally after an article of impeachment is received, the Senate then turns into a court of impeachment. Can you explain why this time is a bit different? Sure. Well, I should say, luckily, there is no normally. We've only had a few circumstances yeah. where this has happened. We've it's only true. had three presidents, uh, sorry, three presidents who have ever been impeached. And President Nixon, of course, resigned before he was impeached. But yes, the typical in this atypical realm is that you would walk the articles of impeachment over to the Senate. But there's nothing in the Constitution that says the Senate has to take it up right away. So really what we see here in terms of timing is a political compromise and frankly a compromise that I think Republicans won because they wanted to push this off. They said until the president could get his defense team together, which it looks like he has now. I also tend to think that the further away we get from the raw emotion of the insurrection, the further we get away from that moment of the Capitol under siege, frankly, the better it is for President Trump, because you just have that space between the raw emotion and then the trial itself. You know, it's so interesting, Jessica, because some of the senators who are going to be there as jurors in this trial are also considered witnesses. They were there when the Capitol was attacked. So how might we see evidence and witness testimony presented in this case? Well, you're right. This impeachment trial is so different for that reason that the people who are sitting as jurors are part of the story. They actually took part in what happened. Now, you know, how could this play out? I've said this before, but I'm going to repeat it. The impeachment trial, even though we say the word trial, it's not in a courtroom. So in terms of the rules of evidence, you don't have to adhere to federal rules of evidence. The Senate does have the power to compel testimony, for instance. But it will be really interesting to see whether or not either the prosecution, the House managers, or the defense decide, you know what, we want to try and ramp up our case by calling some of the people who will make this decision, by calling some of either members of Congress or the senators themselves to say, where were you? What did you hear? And in the case of some senators even, what was your connection with the people who created this insurrection? We don't know yet what the House managers will do. Um, the first time around for the impeachment a year ago, of course, there was no um, external, there were no external witnesses, no evidence. Um, this time, of course, it's totally different because the story is much simpler and the people who are making the decision, again, were part of the story. It's really, really an unbelievable situation. It is. And Jessica, you mentioned a moment ago the passage of time. So several Senate Republicans were initially critical of Mr. Trump's role in inciting the riot at the Capitol. But now a growing number say they oppose a conviction. What legal arguments are they making? So the legal arguments they're making is that when it comes to impeachment, we're talking about people who are currently office holders, that we're not talking about a president once he is a former president. Legally speaking, frankly, I think that holds no water for a host of issues. One, the punishment for impeachment is not just removal from office. If it were, then yes, you have a point. If you've already been removed by virtue of the fact that your term is up, okay. But one of the, the other punishment for impeachment here is disqualification from office. And that's something that has as much force and value if you're currently an office holder or if you're not, no longer an office holder. And remember, if we said otherwise, that would mean that anybody who's on the brink of impeachment could just resign and therefore avoid the potential punishment of being disqualified from office. So we also have pre precedent for this. We have the Secretary of War in 1876. I know I said 1876, but it's still precedent, <laughs> who was in fact tried in a Senate trial after he resigned from office. So legally, I don't think this is an argument that holds water. Politically, it does seem to be the argument that Republicans have coalesced around. 
So finally, Jessica, let's get down to sort of brass tacks here. How many Republican senators are needed to convict former President Trump? And you mentioned a potential consequence uh, if convicted that could be disqualification from future office. What other consequences uh, could he potentially face? So, yeah, so the two consequences under the Constitution are removal from office and disqualification for conviction you need two-thirds of the Senate, and that's 67 senators. Now, if Democrats hold all of the members of the party, then that would be 17 Republican senators. Frankly, I don't see that today. And then if the president is convicted by that two-thirds vote, then you have a separate vote that's kind of like a sentencing. And the sentencing vote can happen just by a simple majority. And the sentencing, again, would be the punishment, which is, will the president be disqualified from office? Obviously, big legal and political consequences if the specter of a President Trump campaign for 2024 isn't looming large over the country for the next four years. Yeah, and there's so much to watch between now and the week of February 8th, Jessica, to see what kind of other legal arguments on both sides uh, are made ahead of the actual trial. All right, Jessica Levinson. Jessica, always great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you.